credit to our kickoff team. It's something you guys know. I've, I've challenged them. I was very disappointed in our kickoff team, um, but I thought they showed up today. And I think that shows a lot about the character of a, a football team when you're able to run down there and, and hold the opponent within the 20 yard line. It's very important. Uh, Coach Barnes and staff continue to do things at a high level. Um, it, the special teams is getting better by the week. And then offensively, you got to continue to find ways to have answers. And hopefully, we can get healthy. We know what a wonderful opponent Houston is. Um, Friday night ESPN type game. Our fans were great once again on this beautiful Saturday a.m. into the afternoon. Uh, they, were, they were tremendous. But hopefully we can find ways to continue to get better as a football program and, and be able to go 1 0 next week versus Houston. Brian, two straight weeks, the offense has kind of struggled. Obviously, you took a different tempo. Obviously, you haven't had a great defense. But as you said, you know, we're going to work to get better. What do you think the biggest concern in these last two weeks is why the offense has really kind of struggled? Yeah, you know, Evan, very similar. Like we were able to talk back again, and I'll go back and watch the film here in a few hours. But it truly, you look at it, and it's a lack of execution by one person on each play, right? Maybe first play, a, a PN10 was a bad play call. Maybe the second time was a missed block by the left guard, right? Next play was a drop pass. Um, then the next drive, right, an errant throw by Seth Hennigan, or maybe a misread. Um, Maybe again, so you just start to look at these. Maybe the tight end missed a block or an assignment. And so you look at it, and in every single play, it seems to be one guy not doing exactly what we need. And we've got to find ways to get that corrected. And I wish there's some magic answer. Hey, we're just going to, it's not necessarily practicing harder. Maybe we got to put our guys in better situations uh, and find it, whether it's through film study, through practice habits, um, in order for us to go out there and have success. Because Look, I'm not oblivious to it. Our offense has to improve. We have to be more consistent. That's a word I've used the last two weeks. We did try to take shots down the field and make some of those, you know, long ball throws. But we have to we, we, the the ball's got to be there. We got to be able to protect. We got to go be able to make those balls. If it's a one on one pass, uh, wide receiver DB, we've got to come down with those balls. And we're going to continue to try to challenge his defenses that way. But it's it's a full deal. All eleven guys on the field, plus myself and the play caller, we've got to all be better. So, well, look, Seth is an intelligent young man that um, when he sees that maybe we're not being able to hold up in protection for a minute or maybe it is um, a guy being covered downfield or maybe they had a great defensive call. Um, we knew they had two great edge rushers. They were third in the country in sacks, um, and I'm sure that number is probably going to stay uh, pretty high. Uh, with what they did today. But, you know, Seth is smart enough that he knows if he can go out there and trust his legs. You guys know how much he's improved his athleticism, his his build and things that we were able to do. He's got full reign um, out there to do it. And, you know, that's, that's a lot for a head coach to say about a 19-year-old quarterback. Throwing the ball early was something that we thought we could take advantage. You guys know we did try to press the ball down the field, and, and sometimes we had success and other times we didn't. I mean, the very first play of the game it ended up being a – I think eight yard completion to Javon Ivory. We actually tried to run a, a up route or a go route with uh, Gabe Rogers and it just went there. They did a nice job of covering it. And so, you know, as we continue to progress in the game, we said, okay, can we still try to get it? Obviously, we got to hold up in protection. So, like a lot of those things, Mark, we just got to be, it's going to take all 11 guys on the field in order to continue to be able to execute at a higher level. You know, so the biggest thing that was concerning about Temple is they had three different quarterbacks. In fact, today, at one time, not on the field, but they had multiple times they had this quarter, you know, Mathis was in, then 11 was in, and then Warner was in. And you just sit there and say, wait, all, all of a sudden it was like, which quarterback, who's it, where's he going? Is he going to line up at quarterback? Is he going to line up at wide receiver? Is he going to line up? And so when, anytime you got to prepare for three different quarterbacks, it can create challenges because all three have different attributes that make them uh, great players. And, you know, a new head coach, so you, you, know, you sit there and say, okay, you got a small sample size of what they do. Again, college is ever changing, right? Anybody that's watched our defense, good luck because we're changing up what we do every single week. Um, but our defense, you know, first and foremost, you know, Stan Drake being a running backs guy, uh, we knew they were going to try to run the football. A lot of quick game stuff by Warner had been shown on film, and they were going to take shots. They had some long receivers, and you guys see, like, teams are going to continue to try to pick on uh, Savante Oliver, Greg Rubin, and Davion Ross because maybe we don't have the tallest corners in the world. Um, but if we able to get home with some of the pressure and go be able to defend some of those passes, we will do so. But it, I thought the defense played a really good uh, four-quarter game. I was quite proud of their efforts. Matthew, I don't think your record. Some of the little things better this year than you did last year. 
why is he he made the full got to be yeah, the credit's to the belief of the players. I mean, every single one of these guys, no matter what occurs in a game, what occurs at practice, I mean, the college football, as you guys well, every single week is a whole new season. And every time we have the – I've got a blessed opportunity to stand in front of our guys, I know they believe. And I always say this, it's, you know, as that roster continues to go, those guys are, are going to continue to battle and believe. And I, I said it all along, and this is my seventh year at Memphis, and I don't, we don't like to compare years past – Right, last year we were up 17 nothing on Temple and lost that game. Uh, I think now we're trying to sit there and say, okay, how do we find ways to win games? And we're never going to apologize for wins when it's all said and done. And it, it literally, guess what? Come tonight, after we watch the film with the guys a little bit tomorrow, one million percent of the focus is directly on Houston. And that, guess what? That's going to be the most important game of the week. So these guys believe they've bought into doing it. You know, you look at you know Zay's with a shirt that says all in. I think Zay Collins is one of those guys that exemplifies what it truly means to be all in. And that's not coach speak. It's really not. And it, when these guys start saying the same things, you know, that, that we believe in and our standards and our culture, that's, I think, the biggest difference. And that didn't mean last year's team didn't believe it, right? There's some – the ball bounces funny a lot of ways, right? I mean, that's that's the nature of this thing. And so um, we're going to continue to believe, continue to push, continue to work. But that's one thing I told you guys before the season. I said, I don't know how talented they are. We got a lot of talent. We do. We got great players. They're fantastic. But the belief – and the intelligence and the work ethic of these young men over the last set is the best I've seen in seven years. When you've got a defense that's getting off the field like they are right now, is, does that give you an extra confidence in making those decisions to go for it on fourth down on the offense? Yeah, Frank, I go back that fourth and one, and if you ask me what I go for again, yes. But we, the lack of execution there. But with the way our defense are playing, yes, it gives you great confidence. Um, I got full faith in my flip over the headset and say, hey, defense, we're going for it. Great. Go get it, you know, and it's a, it's no, coach, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Um, you know, I, I take full blame at the end of the game. Um, we, we had a uh, the ability to probably uh, take the ball down with Ryan Glover in and, and probably run it. That, that, that was a dumb play call on my uh, part at the end with us trying to throw it. We got the sack fumble. So full blame on me. It wasn't on the players. Um, but, yes, that we're going to continue to be more aggressive on fourth downs because of our great faith in our defense. A little bit, you know, we always go into a game and say, okay, they have two of the best defensive ends, uh, certainly in our conference. And, and anytime you go against a team that is top five in the country in sacks, you got to be smart. I don't care if you've got um, an all pro left tackle. It's the nature of it. Over time, they're going to continue to get it. And, um, we played some young guys, and that's again, again, no problem there. That's our job is to get those guys ready. Everybody in the country is playing young guys. But, you know, we looked at some of our third down uh, play calls. Hey, what's it going to allow? Some of the pocket movement stuff. And, again, going to having faith in our quarterback saying, hey, what do you like? What do you feel good about? And that's one of the things you, you guys asked what the conversation was at halftime. Hey, Seth, what do you like? What, what's going to – coach, like, this is going to help us. This is good. This is good. And the guy that studies film like he does, it's like having another coach. So it's, it's been fantastic to have him. But, yes, I think that's part of it. You know, and hopefully we can get guys healthy. But also we got to get better. And it doesn't matter if it's a guy like Matt Dale who started, you know, 36 plus games at, at offensive line. We've got to all get better and find ways. It starts with me. Coach, you uh, bring Ryan Glover a lot more today. Is that part of the plan coming in, or is that more of a preservation of Seth in the game right now? Well, you know, it was more, you know, later in the game that Glove was able to go in, and um, we know how talented he is. Um, we know how smart he is. You know, uh, depends on the Ivy League you like, but he was a Wharton School business guy at Penn. Uh, but he, we know how capable he is, and we see it day in, day out practice. It's one of those things we've had packages for him. Uh, we thought the timing was right um, when we were able to quickly get a, a quick change, you know, and get the offense back out there. And man, he ran a, a well executed counter play where he was able to see it. I gave him a hard time. I said, Man, if you get 12 yards, might as well, or whatever it was, you got to get 14 to get in the end zone. Um, but, but, you know, we've we got great faith in him and trust him, obviously. Um, you know, Seth's our quarterback, but it's nice to have a, a, a guy back there that you can trust. So, you know, the one thing, so this job, and this is not me complaining, the job as a head football coach is required a lot more with everything that's going on from transfer portal. i not supposed to have anything to do with NIL, but you guys know my job is not just to sit in a dark room and draw run plays anymore. Um, and so I've kind of removed myself from the uniform, video reveal, I'm off social media. So uh, give our great creative people, you know, Jeff Crane, the rest of our creative department, uh, 
you know, Scott Burns, those guys are the ones that handle all that. I just sit back. I have no idea what it is. In fact, uh, it's kind of nice not knowing what uniform we're going to wear until I get into the locker room. It saves me a lot of heartache and all that stuff. So any of that stuff, as good as it is, give them full credit. If it's bad, just, I'll send you guys some numbers you all can call. But So I have no idea. We'll take it. Yeah, and that's we practice that, you know, and again, every college football team practice takeaways, but we preach it and we preach it and we preach it. If you ever come out to a practice, which you guys are, but if you're ever, I'm blue in my face saying get takeaways, own the ball, you know, because ultimately that's how you're going to win football games, and whether it's a 21 to 3 game or 24 to 3 game, whatever the heck it is, um, you know, or a 2 nothing game or a 50 to 49, owning the football and getting takeaways will ultimately lead to winning games no matter how they look. Well, uh, look, I, I, like I've said all along, it doesn't matter who shows up week in, week out. We know, you know, you talk to any of our guys on defense, they know there's going to be a game at some point. We're going to have to rely on the offense to get it done and to be able to be um, more successful and execute at a higher level. But it, it is good to have great faith in our defense and the way they've been able to do things, special teams. So the identity continues to be built. And we won't know what this team's all about in, until early January. And that, again, is not locker room talk. That is Evan just trying to say, OK, what are we week in and week out? A lot is um, what the opponent's doing to us. We've got a lot of work to do, a ton of work to do. Four and one's great, but it's not five and zero. Oh. And it, we haven't done anything yet at all. I have done nothing yet as a head coach. We have to get better. And I cannot wait to get back to the drawing board and find ways to continue to get better. And our identity every single week will be created. But like I said, we'll always be able to hang our hat on these guys that have grit and perseverance. And they're going to do it the right way with great standards.